tailgaters, Ross of the Pigskin Tales podcast here. The buzz of summer and the anticipation of the college football season is in the air. It's the perfect time to gear up with Homefield, a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They have over 150 plus college designs to choose from, each one showcasing a unique part of your team's history. My personal experience with Homefield has been exceptional. Their apparel is comfortable and their vintage designs bring back fond memories of my alma mater. So as the excitement for the upcoming college football season builds, make sure to visit Homefield's website at homefieldapparel.com. Get ready today for the upcoming season and represent our favorite teams in style with Homefield. Again, that's homefieldapparel.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. This is the final part of a seven-part series on the best NFL teams of the 1970s. Today we're going to talk about the number one team of the 1970s, and that would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. With a long history of losing and a 1-13 record in 1969, Steeler fans hoped for better days in the 1970s. When 1970 started out with three straight losses, it looked like another long season for Pittsburgh. But after winning four of their next five games, Steeler fans felt optimistic. But their optimism quickly faded when the Steelers lost five of their next six to finish the season five and nine. Defensive tackle Joe Green and linebacker Andy Russell made the Pro Bowl. The Steelers finished the 1971 season with six wins and eight losses. It was the team's eighth losing season in a row. But, led by Bill Super Scout Nunn, the team had been building up talent through the draft and it was just a matter of time before it paid off. Joe Green and Andy Russell made the Pro Bowl again. Going into his fourth season as head coach, Chuck Knoll had an uninspiring record of 12 wins and 30 losses. But team owner Art Rooney stuck with his man. Besides having a good coach, The team had some talented players. Linebacker Andy Russell and center Ray Mansfield were nine-year veterans. Guard Sam Davis was a five-year veteran. Defensive end Elsie Greenwood and defensive tackle Joe Green were three-year veterans. Quarterback Terry Bradshaw and cornerback Mel Blunt were two-year veterans while outside linebacker Jack Cam and defensive end Dwight White were one-year veterans. Running back Franco Harris was a promising young rookie. Now it was time to see what all that talent could produce on the field. The 1972 Steelers surpassed most fans' expectations by finishing the regular season with 11 wins and only three losses. All three losses were close games. Some of their wins were blowouts. They beat the Patriots 33-3, the Bengals 40-17, the Browns 30-0, and the Chargers 24-2. They would play the Raiders at home in the playoffs and win 13-7 in the famous Immaculate Reception game. They would play at home again the following week in the AFC Championship against the Dolphins, a game they lost 21-17. 
While it was a disappointing end, few expected this team to come so close to a Super Bowl, and it was clear that the Steelers were cellar dwellers no more. Joe Green and Andy Russell made the Pro Bowl again, and they were joined by defensive end Dwight White, Franco Harris, middle linebacker Henry Davis, and kicker Roy Jarella. Joe Green made all pro and won the Defensive Player of the Year award. Franco Harris won Rookie of the Year, and Chuck Noll won Coach of the Year. The 1973 season started with the Steelers outscoring their first three opponents, 93-23. to 23. A Week 9 win over the Raiders gave the Steelers an 8-1 record. But suddenly the team went into a terrible slump, losing three games in a row. They rebounded to win their final two games, but lost a rematch with the Raiders in the playoffs. The game wasn't even close, as Oakland gained 232 yards on the ground against the Steel Curtain defense while holding Pittsburgh to only 65 yards rushing. Franco Harris, receiver Ron Shanklin, Joe Green, defensive end L.C. Greenwood, linebacker Jack Ham, Andy Russell, Dwight White, and guard Bruce Van Dyke made the Pro Bowl. Joe Green also made All-Pro again. Roy Blunt Jr. wrote a book titled About Three Bricks Shy of a Load. The book was about the Steelers' 1973 season, and the title implied that all the Steelers needed was a few more top-notch players to win the Super Bowl. It turns out that Roy was right. In 1974, the Steelers had one of the best drafts ever, drafting four future Hall of Fame players, Middle linebacker Jack Lambert, center Mike Webster, receivers Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. They also signed safety Donnie Shell, another future Hall of Famer, as a free agent. Pittsburgh had another successful regular season, winning 10 games, losing three with one tie. But now it was time to see if all those draft picks from the last six years would pay off. In the playoff game, Pittsburgh had no trouble with the Buffalo Bills, cruising to a 32-14 win. They would travel to Oakland to face the Raiders in the AFC Championship game. The two teams met in Week 3, and Oakland shut the Steelers out, 17-0. But the results were different today. The game was a back-and-forth affair until late in the fourth quarter when Franco Harris ran 21 yards for a touchdown to give the Steelers a 24-13 victory. Now the Steelers would travel to New Orleans to face the Vikings in the Super Bowl. It was a hard-hitting defensive battle, and the Steelers came out on top, 16-6. It took 42 years but the Pittsburgh Steelers were finally world champions. Franco Harris, Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood, Andy Russell, Jack Ham, and Roy Jarella made the Pro Bowl. Greenwood, Ham, and Green made all pro. Green also won the Defensive Player of the Year for the second time, while Jack Lambert won Rookie of the Year. 1975 would prove to be the Steelers' best team to date. They breezed through the regular season with a 12-2 record, blowing out several of their opponents. They beat the Chargers 37-0, the Browns 42-6, the Bears 34-3, and the Chiefs 28 to 3. They had no trouble with the Colts in the playoffs, winning 28 to 10. 
For the fourth year in a row, the Steelers and Raiders would do battle in the postseason. It was another hard-hitting defensive game, and Pittsburgh came out on top 16-10. In the Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys, they were behind 10-7 in the fourth quarter, but came back to win 21-17 for their second Vince Lombardi trophy in a row. Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, Lynn Swan, free safety Glenn Edwards, strong safety Mike Wagner, cornerback Mel Blunt, Jack Cam, Jack Lambert, Andy Russell, Joe Green, and L.C. Greenwood made the Pro Bowl. Ham, Blunt, and Greenwood made all pro. Blunt won the Defensive Player of the Year award. The 1976 Steelers shocked everyone, especially themselves, by starting out the season with one win and four losses. But they made up for it by having perhaps the best 10-game win streak in NFL history. During one three-game stretch, they outscored their opponents 95-0. to zero. During another three-game stretch, they outscored their opponents 70 to 3. They also pitched five shutouts during the season. They easily defeated the Colts in the playoffs 40 to 14, but lost Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer to injuries. They would face the Raiders in the AFC Championship for the third year in a row. The Raiders ended the Steelers' 10 game win streak with a 24 to 7 victory. There would be no three-peat for Pittsburgh. Franco Harris, Glenn Edwards, Elsie Greenwood, Jack Lambert, Mike Wagner, Jack Ham, Mel Blunt, Joe Green, and cornerback J.T. Thomas made the Pro Bowl. Ham and Lambert made All-Pro. Lambert also won the Defensive Player of the Year award. An opening day, 27 to zero routes of over the 49ers gave Steeler fans reason to believe their team was back and better than ever. But a 16 to seven loss at home to the Raiders the following week brought them back down to earth. The rest of the season was up and down and their nine and five record was good enough for the division title. In the playoffs, Pittsburgh traveled to Denver to meet the 12-2 Broncos. Denver had beaten Pittsburgh in Week 8, 21-7, and the playoff game was no different as the Broncos won again, 34-21. Franco Harris, Lynn Swan, Jack Ham, Joe Green, and Jack Lambert made the Pro Bowl. Green, Harris, and Ham made all pro. After a two-year absence from the Super Bowl, there were those who thought the Steelers' dynasty was over. They were sadly mistaken. Pittsburgh finished the 1978 regular season with 14 wins and only two losses, their best record in team history. In the playoffs, they avenged their 1977 playoff loss to Denver, beating them 33-10. Next up, was the Earl Campbell-led Houston Oilers in the AFC Championship. The two teams had split their regular season games, but this one was over right from the start, as the Steel Curtain defense held Campbell to 62 yards rushing on 22 carries and destroyed the Oilers 34-5. The Steelers would play the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, for the second time in the last four years. Whoever won would be the first team to win three Super Bowls. In one of the best Super Bowls ever played, the Steelers came out on top 35 to 31. Franco Harris, Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood, Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, Mel Blunt, Donnie Shell, and Mike Webster made the Pro Bowl. Ham, Webster, Swan, and Bradshaw made All-Pro. Bradshaw also won the NFL 
MVP Award. 1979 was an up and down season for the Steelers. There were times when they looked like the defending NFL champions they were, and other times when it looked like age was catching up with them. In a week two game with the Oilers, they held Earl Campbell to just 38 yards rushing and cruised to a 38 to seven win. But then, in a Week 7 game against the lowly Cincinnati Bengals, they lost 34-10. The following week, they beat the Broncos 42-7. Two weeks later, they beat up the Redskins 38-7. And the week after that, they thrashed the Chiefs 30-3. But the next week, they got a beatdown by the Chargers 35-7. In the final week of the regular season, they shut out the Buffalo Bills 28-0. <clears throat> now it was on to the playoffs to face the Miami Dolphins. But which Steelers team would show up? The Steelers who got crushed by the Chargers and a 4-12 Bengals team? Or the Steelers who beat up on solid teams like the Oilers, Broncos, and Redskins? It didn't take long to get the answer, as Pittsburgh took a commanding 20-0 lead into the locker room at halftime, and then cruised to a 34-14 win. Next was a rematch with the Oilers. The Steel Curtain defense once again held Earl Campbell in check, allowing him only 15 yards rushing. The Steelers won 27-13 and were on their way back to the Super Bowl where they would take on the Los Angeles Rams. Pittsburgh was the heavy favorite for obvious reasons. Number one, they were the defending Super Bowl champions, and number two, they had a 14-4 record, while the Rams had an 11-7 record. The Rams gave Pittsburgh all they could handle, leading 19-17 after three full quarters of play. But Pittsburgh came back in the fourth quarter, as they always seemed to do, and won their fourth Super Bowl, 31-19. Franco Harris, Terry Bradshaw, John Stallworth, Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, Mel Blunt, Donnie Schell, Mike Webster, Joe Green, and L.C. Greenwood made the Pro Bowl. Stallworth, Webster, Ham, Lambert and Shell made all pro. Lambert also won Defensive Player of the Year award for the second time in his career. The bottom line? The Steelers' regular season record during the 1970s was 99 wins, 44 losses, and one tie. Their postseason record was 14 wins and only four losses. They won seven division titles, they won four AFC titles, and, of course, four Super Bowl titles. As a Dallas Cowboys fan since 1969, it was hard to admit the Steelers were the better team. I tried to find reasons to rank the Cowboys ahead of Pittsburgh. Dallas won more games in the 1970s than anyone else including Pittsburgh. Dallas appeared in more postseason games than anyone else, including Pittsburgh. Dallas won more conference titles than anyone else, including the Steelers. Dallas never had a losing season in the 1970s, while Pittsburgh had two losing seasons. But the teams played each other five times during the 1970s, and the Steelers won four of those games. And two of those games were the Super Bowl. The Steelers won four Super Bowls during the 1970s, and Dallas won two. There's no way around that fact. So yes, as much as it pains me, I have to say it. The Steelers were the best team of the 1970s. Well, that will conclude our podcast for today. Tune in again next Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and God bless.
Hey there, sports history fan. This is Darren Hayes, host of the Pigskin Dispatch and Jersey Dispatch podcast. I hope you've enjoyed another great episode here on Sports History Network. Now, speaking of sports history, this episode was brought to you by Firefly Books, and they have two great ones for you this summer. For basketball fans, they have the NBA 75, the definitive history by author Dave Zaram, who's appeared on our Jersey Dispatch podcast recently. He tells about the experience, the thrilling journey of the NBA from its humble beginnings to its modern glory. Uncover the untold stories of triumph, controversy, and the greatest stars of the game. This isn't just a book. It's courtside seats to over 75 years of NBA history. And for the golf enthusiasts, swing into The Golf Round I'll Never Forget by Matt Adams. Relive 50 of golf's most memorable moments through the eyes of the legends themselves. From Garcia's triumph at the 2017 Masters to Nicholas' miraculous 1986 comeback, it's the closest you'll get to walking the fairways with golf's greatest. Get your summer read on. Grab a copy of NBA 75 or The Golf Round I'll Never Forget. Available online or at your favorite bookstore.